Welcome back to week number 10 of college football. I am your host, Coach Cass. I'm coming to you from the wing of mediocrity of the Youth Football Hall of Shame. Our first panelist, he hails from the left coast. He says the West Coast is the best coast. You can't spell SEC without SNC. Please welcome to the show, cool Jude Santa Cruz. What's up, everybody? Fight on. Man. My voice is a little scratchy tonight for some reason. I wonder why. I don't know. All right. Our next panelist hails from the great state of Texas. He's my favorite football player. Please welcome to the show, Hunter. I'm hiding in shame. All right. <laughs> oh, look we're, at we're his not, name. <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're not picky here. All right, Hunter. Oh. Um, you do have an announcement about something that's happening after the end of the show. Can you fill all the great folks in for us? Why Right CFB will be presenting on one night only a special taping that we have obtained that I found. I'm a big WWF fan, and I, you know, I go to sometimes go to garage sales, and out here in my undisclosed location. Are you I on the recruiting found... trail again? Uh, no, I'm hiding in shame. Ah. Um, uh, I nobody nobody wants to wants to go there. Um, I have found a dusty, <laughs> dirty tape of Saturday night's main event, and so at the end of this show, you, the fans of Wide Right CFB, will be able to see a special taping of Saturday night main event. Can you tell us who's on the main event? We have Bobby the Brain Heenan wow. in one of his rare times doing an interview as a commentator. Not many people know he did that, mostly only as someone's the announce table or manager, but he did actually do suit and tie interviews. We have the Macho Man and Hulk, and Hulk Hogan both on the show talking a little bit of college football, which is interesting because I never really heard a lot of that in the WWF, but it's a nice. secret We missed them last year. We missed them last year. Remember, they they were here last year. Jude and I were gone. We were doing something yeah, else. That was a stream I missed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Let's get into this one. Uh, I know Hunter's in all, uh, the, his dauber's a little down, but let, we can't ever be down when we're talking about the salute to the service academies. And let's start with that. I'm going to start with the Coast Guard Academy. They got a comeback win against Norwich, which is the worst team in the new Mac, but it's okay. Because a win is a win, right? So they beat Norwich 17-13. to Coast Guard rushed for 167 yards. They threw for 186. And they only had one penalty for 15 yards. So they did pretty good. Uh, quarterback Joey Armantrout, he had a rough outing. But he led Coast Guard Academy to the game-winning drive. Uh, next week, Coast Guard Academy plays WPI in New London, Connecticut. And if you're wondering what WPI stands for, that's Worcester Polytechnical Institute. And uh, Worcester Polytechnical Institute defeated Lindsay's team, the Merchant Marine Academy, last week, 35-24. to And it's going to be a tough game, but I'm going to lean on the Bears with the home field advantage. I'm saying Coast Guard Academy is going to win 21-14. to All right, Jude, let's hear about, well, the Air Force Academy is playing a pretty big game this weekend versus the Army. Um <clears throat> I guess we get to go both, both on both here. Hunter is Navy playing this week? Uh, I believe they are. Look here. Yep, they play Rice. Ah, good recovery game. They look terrible against Notre Dame. All right, Jude. Well, let's talk about Air Force and Army. You, you and I can cover this Air Force and Army because I have to cover Army for Bocce, obviously. So. What what is your thoughts on the Air Force, dude? Man, tough season. I mean, I believe one and six, one and seven right now, something like that. That's just yeah. they're just not yeah. not playing well. Uh, and I very seldom pick against my academy. Uh, I do not have any hurt feelings about picking against them this week, only because they're playing another service academy. I think the Army Black Knights are gonna destroy them. <laughs> Uh, on on their way to the play football play, college football playoff, Air Force is just another bump in the road. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one. Uh, the rushing attack led by Bryson Daly and Kanye Udo are just amazing for Army. 
and all they do is run down the field and score points. So I'm going to lean uh, Army to win by double digits. I mean, it's going to be 35 to 7, maybe. Maybe 40. It, it could get out of control quick. And it's funny, Army somehow has gotten into Falcon Stadium where it says Air Force on there, they added a C and an H to the chairs and made, renamed it Chair Force. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see. That happened at, at, well, it's a story for another day. That happened at our school one time. Our rival school came to our football field and they dieseled, they poured a diesel outline of something on our field. And so then the infinite wisdom of our school administrators, they just spray painted the outline. So it still looked like, you know, what they diesel off. The <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, we're like giant green cock in the field. <laughs> Not the rooster either. No, it looked like Kermit's frog, a BCG. Oh, <laughs> or BGC. Wow. All right. All right. All right. Let's keep going. All right. All right. <laughs> With that said, Hunter, tell us about Navy. At Rice or Rice at Navy? Well, what are we? Yeah, it's, uh, Navy at Rice. Uh, Navy had a rough loss to Notre Dame. A lot of opportunities that they quite literally fumbled away. Um, they take on Rice. Rice has just fired their coach, uh, Mike Bloomgren. I don't really expect much out of Rice. I haven't really seen much out of them this season. I'm going to go with the midshipmen. They're favored by 10.5. I'll, I'll take that. Probably 14. More to go on top. They're going to beat the crap out of Rice. Yep. Okay. I agree with you on that. I think they're going to smash Rice. Rice is I'm not trying not to be negative good all or anything. Year. I mean, it's just I just don't see Rice being a very good team, especially after firing their coach. I thought, I thought that even though it's not been the results they want, he is the reason why they have been at all relevant. Rice was all right, the we're gonna... perfect game to follow Notre Dame. You know, just right. just in case, I thought they'd be a little more competitive. But regardless, win, lose, or draw, Rice was the perfect team to follow. You know, when you're playing a yeah. national power. Yeah, if not a bye week, you know. Rice yeah, really yeah. Pool. Well, let's head to our next segment. That's a uh, five star versus one star, and uh, I'm gonna go first. Our five star is uh, Pat Narduzzi and the Pitt Panthers. They absolutely smashed Syracuse last Friday. I mean, it was uh, just a butt whooping. And uh, man, they they play offense, they play defense. They're that's a really good team. And I'm telling you what, they that's a surprising. Uh, result. They're good enough to play with the top of the ACC, I think. I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I think. Uh, my one-star performer last week was Missouri, and how Missouri is still ranked, I don't know. Uh, I'm not impressed with Missouri any longer. Without Brady, like Hunter said, without Brady Cook, they are trash, and uh, they're not good. So I'm going to lean my one-star is Missouri. I really feel I like Missouri... How- I don't know how a team can lose 35 to nothing. Already being ranked 21 in the country and being ranked 25. They lost 35 I mean, Van- to the nothing. Big Vanderbilt should be ranked above Missouri. I mean, Navy There's- should be ranked above Missouri. Navy only lost to Notre Dame, right? Missouri got smashed by uh, – it's Alabama, but you were ranked number seven at one point this season. But Awful. I Awful digress. Team. Jude, can you give me a five star versus a one star from last week? Oh yeah, uh, a five star for me in a losing effort, man. Playing hard, trying to trying to stay relevant in a bounce back season. I'm going to give the Nebraska Cornhuskers like a lot of props. I don't think anybody thought that they were would lose to Ohio State by four. You know, I think they were probably thought they lose to Ohio State by forty, and they came in and they played a really tough game. Uh, if, and, if they could have run the football, yep, thirty percent more in the game, I think they probably would have beaten Ohio State. I, I agree with you. They just they they, they got pass happy. Yep, exactly. I, I mean, they, it, they need to stop looking at uh, Dylan Rayola as Patrick Mahomes. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He is at least not a, yet. He's a true he, freshman. He's a true. Exactly, well, I, I was just gonna say that. You give him time. He maybe he may not be, but but don't force that on him now because you could ruin him for the for the future years. I mean, just hand the ball off. I don't give a shit if it goes a yard. Just hand the ball off. Just just try to develop a running game. Try not to limit him. All right, Jude, who's your one star from last week? Uh, my one star from last week is uh, – I don't know if you, if you gave him the one star or if you just gave 
the other team the five star. But I'm gonna go with the Syracuse Orange man. The Orange man. They didn't show up. They they didn't know what to do. They were just in getting their butts whipped up and down the field. And they deserve a one star one star performance this week. Sometimes it does happen. I will say that. All right, Hunter. Who's your five star performer from last week? He only played about a quarter and a third, but um, I'm going to go with Marcel Reed. You know, A and M looked like they were going to lose to LSU. I mean, they they their de- their defense was getting kind of diced up, and their offense looked terrible. They couldn't move the ball. Marcel Reed comes in, scores three rushing touchdowns, throws two passes for 70 yards and another touchdown, and completely changed the momentum of the game. And while he's had his struggles this season, I mean, for a game to have a, for a time to have a really good game, that was definitely one for them to have there. So I'm going to give the five-star performance to Marcel Reed at Texas A&M. And for my one-star performance, um, I, you know, I won't homer against my own team like I love to do. I love can't to do it because the last two they didn't lose. They didn't play. <laughs> well, um, then therefore, they did not lose. But I'm going to go with uh, UTSA. You had a 35-7 to 7 lead in the start of the second middle, half. Middle of the third quarter, by the way. It was 42-17 at, at middle of the third quarter. And you managed to lose to Tulsa, who wants to fire their coach, 45-46. to 46. So Oops. anytime you have a massive choke job, Yo, I, I don't even want to give him a star. I, I'd say zero star. <laughs> a half a star. <laughs> like, you built the lead, and then you lost. Like, maybe fantasy points, like, are good. They, like, hey, you know, fantasy, UTSA won three or two and a half quarters. Maybe three if you consider into the well, fourth. Do they add that on the end of the schedule, or do they just go with, with the I mean, flat? you got to do some Aggie math on this one, but. I don't, I, I don't even know if Aggies I, would claim that win, Dad. Ooh, I don't know. I kid because I care. They did claim their spring game one year as part of their record. They did win their spring game. Just remember, everyone else in college football agrees a has had two 10-win seasons in the last 40 years. a thinks they've had three. <laughs> they, dude, did you know that they claimed their spring game as a win? Or, or the last 20 years, sorry. Right, so I, I, do have a, you know, I do have a homework up behind me. I am a... Longhorn fan, but also above that, I have a Notre Dame hat, which AM hates both Texas and Notre Dame equally. Well, not equally, but they do hate both of them pretty hey, much. If the they same. claim the spring game as a win, don't they kind of yeah. have to claim it as a loss at the same time? I mean, they no, claim this. come on. That, hey, that, that's who are we a, talking about? That's the, that's the, <laughs> who are we talking about? That's a valid, you know, deal. No. <laughs> They also right. claimed the 2010 Big 12 Championship. All right, again. all right, all right. All right. They didn't play enough, it. enough knocking on AM. We're going to move on to conference breakdown. Just little facts. And with Lindsay not here today, normally we don't do their own conferences, but I'm running out of teams. To my Conference USA doesn't play any games that aren't already played. We have one <laughs> game this weekend. Let me go ahead and start with me. I'm going to start with Conference USA. I have the Mountain West pulled up. I was going to hit Jude up real quick, but. Let me start with Conference USA, because I want y'all to hear how crazy this is, right? Conference USA has one game on Saturday. That's Middle Tennessee State versus UTEP. We were just literally talking about the bottom of the barrel is the only game on TV this week. So Conference USA is the only one on TV. Uh, New Mexico State got beat by Florida International 34-13. to Louisiana Tech, oh my God. Where are your sandals? Sam Houston won the game nine to three. I mean, it's the least inspiring football I've ever seen. The only thing we, good we have tomorrow night is Jacksonville State plays at Liberty. The problem is Liberty lost last week to a team that's never beaten an FBS team. So we got that going for us. But the Kennesaw State they're looking for their second FBS win against Western Kentucky tomorrow. Western Kentucky's favored by twenty four. I would I would take the under on that one. And then Middle Tennessee State's playing UTEP. And you just don't know what the hell you're going to get with either one of those teams. And UTEP's favored by three. So how I'll break it down is is by the time the, everybody watches this, it'll it'll be like probably Thursday night. So I'm taking UTEP to cover and to win outright. I'm telling you right now, Kennesaw State's going to keep this thing close against Western Kentucky. They may not win, but I would say I would take the over and take Kennesaw State to cover. 
And I'm about to say, I'm going to pick the upset. Jacksonville State's going to beat Liberty at home by 14. Wow. You heard it here first. So, Big. all right. With that said, I'm going to hop over to the I'll, – I'll do the American, and Jude can do the ACC. All right. Since the Mountain, since the mountain West is pretty thin this week, too. So, I'll say – on the on the American, we have Tulane at Charlotte. Tulane's going to win that game by a country mile garage. It's not even going to be close. <laughs> South Florida at Florida Atlantic. If this makes it into one of y'all's games of the week, the W E A K, I'm not going to be offended. I'm not picking a I'm not picking a winner on this. The Bulls are favored by three. I don't know if that happens. Jude's already covered Air Force at Army. We both agree on that one. <laughs> Memphis is traveling to the parking lot. To play uh, Utsa, so take on the night school. Yeah, you got, uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna think I'm gonna take the Tigers against the day laborers here. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can't we can't say that. Come well, on. no, because they go to night school. They work during the day. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> what do you think I meant? Good recovery. Good recovery. <laughs> then we have Tulsa playing the dry. I mean, like this is the shit of the shit here, dude. I think you lucked out getting the ACC. I got the American. Tulsa's playing UAB. Both teams are bad, like really hey, bad. UAB there is a degenerate gambler out there right now that has a parlay on all these games. And if he doesn't make it, he will wear concrete shoes. Uh, I don't know. Well, it's all right. They, any of these teams could probably still beat Florida State. I'm just saying. All right. And That's then finally, you got Navy at Rice. I agree with Hunter. Navy's going to win this game. They only have Navy favored by 10 and a half. I think Navy wins this thing by like 30 points. I mean, I think this is going to be a blowout. Uh, Tulsa and UAB, I'm going to lean on the home team. Much like, uh, except for with Memphis and UTSA, I don't think UTSA can hold off Memphis. I think Memphis is too good. The quarterback was being mentioned in the upper echelons of quarterback play earlier this year. I think they beat UTSA handily. All right, Jude heading to the ACC. Duke and Miami are in our ones to watch. So we're going to go with Stanford traveling once again across the country to play North Carolina State. What do you think on this one? Uh, North Carolina State, and they'll cover that 10-point spread, but I would take the under on the 46 and a half. All right. On the CW network at 11 a.m., which nobody's going to be watching this game because everybody's going to be watching Ohio State, Penn State. Vatek is traveling to Syracuse to take on Syracuse. Now, this is a hard place to play. And Vatek has not been a consistent team. I can see Syracuse getting a win here. What do you think, Jude? Yeah, Syracuse is a four-point dog at home, but Vatek's too inconsistent, like you said. Uh, I'm going to take Syracuse to win outright, and I'm going to take an also an under on the 53 and a half. All right, and this is our final ACC game because Louisville and Clemson and Pittsburgh and SMU both made the ones to watch. And Like Hunter said, is this the first time that Mac Brown gets a win against Florida State? Uh, it, it is because he, he's not coaching Cal, and Cal's the only team that can't beat Florida State. But, yeah, <laughs> take, take UNC, that two-and-a-half is too little. I say they're probably going to beat him by about at least a touchdown. And, again, I, I mean, I'm staying low, but I'm going to take the under on that 50-and-a-half. Hunter, do you have anything to add on this one? It's for the kids. <laughs> and that, is he a athletic coast conference, or is Jude like to say the all-coast conference? Like my hey, dude, let's coast. go ahead and do uh, Mountain West real quick. All right. All right. So on Friday at 7 p.m. on Fox Sports 1, we have San Diego State traveling to take on the Broncos of Boise State. Uh, and Boise State doesn't see any kind of upset here. Do you think they cover the, that spread? Uh, that's going to be the, the game right there, whether they cover or not. Uh, Boise State's a good team. San Diego State's not so good. 23 and a half points. I'm going to take them to cover that. And on this one, staying with the trend so far, I'm going to take an under on that 57 and a half. All right. Wyoming at New Mexico at 3 p.m. on True TV. Do you think New Mexico gets the win against the Cowboys here? I'm uh, going to have to go with them probably just because of the home team. Uh, I'll, I'll be talking about this game a little later on the program as well. Ah. Uh-oh. Then at 6 p.m. with no TV, <laughs> Fresno State host Hawaii. Oh, I- why are we getting blacked out on Hawaii? Like Hawaii, like I feel like they should be on the back of a milk carton. We I mean, haven't seen them. Hawaii, Do they really exist? I'll give Hawaii props. They beat the shit out of Nevada last week. I mean, they beat the life out of them. 
They're not yeah. this week. But this is actually a rivalry game, surprisingly. I don't know what they call it. I think they call it Volcano versus Valley, something like that. It's a decent little rivalry game that goes back to the Whack days and the Colt Brennan and uh, Derek Carr days. So just some thoughts. In, unless you have $21 to go spend in Fresno, California, you're not going to see this game. <laughs> yeah. I think it's but to, conversely, hard. if you get $9 in your pocket, there's a stadium in Reno, Nevada that's going to have a game on Saturday at 7 p.m. on CBS Sports Network. So if you want to save that 9 bucks and sit at home, Colorado State travels to play Nevada. Colorado State's a one-and-a-half-point favorite, and the over-under is like 45-and-a-half points. Jude, Colorado State I'm, not, I'm not going to throw out a guess on this thing. I'm going to let you tackle it. You're the expert. Yeah, Colorado State's going to – that, that one-and-a-half is not enough. They're going to win by 10 points, 45-and-a-half. I'm going to stay with the under. And on the other game, I'm taking Fresno State to smash Hawaii. Even though Hawaii smashed Nevada last week, you know, that's about as good as, 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 good as it's going to get for them this week. Fresno State will cover that, and that's a tough one. I might go with the over on that 48 and a half. Yeah, I, I don't see Fresno State having any problem with Hawaii, but then again, you just never know. That's why they line up and play the game, right? Yep. All right, Hunter, let's talk about the fun belt for a minute. I know you don't want to, and we can exclude your job. team from it. No, I'm not going to exclude them. They Tech State took an L. They you know, underperformed again for the fourth week, fourth game, barely fifth game this season. They just ended up winning one of those underperformances. So, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, just going to own it as a fan. I'm not, I'm not a sunshine pumper for any teams I cheer for. Never have been, never will be. Can't lose like this. It's unacceptable. Um, and I think changes need to be made because you have too much momentum in the program to go and have a season like this. I agree. All right. On Friday, Georgia state at UConn. Does the uh, Panthers have anything for the Huskies? Uh, you know, that game, Georgia State, I thought was better this year than they have been. Um, I was just wrong. And UConn's a lot better than I gave them credit for. I'm going to go with the Huskies. I mean, Jim Moore Jr.'s got them rolling out there. They're going to get their sixth win this week. I like them by, by 10. So, this obviously, I have them covered in the seven and a half points out there in Rensselaer Field. And this is a game that Friday night, um, Hopefully, with uh, all the obligations not with hand, not um, not getting in the way, I'm gonna sit down and watch because I do like Jim Moore Jr. as a coach, and I certainly think that UConn's gonna win this game. Too bad he didn't have a voice like his dad. Playoffs. Well, <laughs> who knows? All right. I know where I'm leaning on this game: Old Dominion at App State. I'm gonna go with the Monarchs. I mean, App State did get a big emotional win last week, and you know, again. Thoughts and prayers to that part of the country. I just Old Dominion as a team transformed with their with their quarterback with this quarterback in, and um, I don't think App State has is equipped to stop it. Uh, they did get an important win last week um, to, for a bunch of levels. I think Old Dominion goes out and dominates App State uh, through the quarterback run game. I'm going to say look for Old Dominion to win by at least seven points. All right. So last week we were really, you were really big on UL Monroe, which caused me to be really big on UL Monroe, and UL Monroe did not do well. <laughs> They're yeah, traveling they, to Marshall Monroe. this week to take on the Thundering Herd. What you got? UL bud? Monroe took a loss. I think they're gonna bounce back. I like their coach a lot. I think he's a good coach. Uh, they haven't been bowling in like ten something years apparently, so I think they're gonna break that streak and they're gonna get that win against Marshall and get to a bowl game. All right, two teams that might not be going bowling. Well, one might, one might not be. Coastal Carolina at Troy. Well, Troy Coastal is definitely not going four and a half. I, I think Coastal's going to win this game soundly. I mean, Coastal's had some injuries and some issues, but Troy is a, uh, as the kids say, a dead team right now. Um, I, I hate it for the fans of Troy. They're a very loyal fan base. Um, you know, they're so loyal that even when they aren't there, that somehow they get counted in the stadium counts for attendance. I'm going to go with the Chanticleers on this one. All right. You know, like I always said, if they, you know, if you're worried about the other guy, hmm. actually, there's something else I always say. I probably can't say it on the stream, huh? Uh, I don't know. So probably, you know, not. like, you know, like whenever we're playing somebody and we blow them out, you know what I always say? Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah. 
It's not my fault. You should have showed up ready to play. Sometimes the cards go your way. Sometimes no, they I've don't. I've never been someone that's like, oh, they blew us out. How disrespectful. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, oh, we have to do better. I never looked at a blowout loss as like, oh, that. How dare they blow us out? I looked at it as like I need to get my shit together because obviously That's... we are doing something wrong. I mean, I, I agree with you 100. percent There, there was a famous game where Jim Harbaugh ran up the score on SC and tr- and try to try to get a 50 spot, you know, by going for two or something like that late in the game. At the end of the game, Pete Carroll, my boy Pete Carroll, I love the dude, tells him, "Oh, so what? What's with that man?" or something like that. I said, "Dude, I'm all just stop him." You know, if you would have stopped him. Anytime throughout the game, you wouldn't worry about him trying to get 50 on you. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, in uh, high school, even on when I played on every B team that we had, you know, we never got blown out, surprisingly. Yeah. But uh, in middle school, we got blown out uh, my eighth grade year by, by another middle school. Their quarterback fumbled the ball. He wasn't their Take quarterback. He was, well, he was their quarterback, I guess. They, I mean, the offense would snap it to him, and he scored. Can I tell the story? Um, can I tell the story on the play? <laughs> yeah, you can tell the so, story. The quarterback takes off. He is 40 yards clear, everybody else. He fumbles the ball. He has to slow down, turn around, come back. He picks the ball off the ground and runs it back in for a touchdown for, like, another 30 yards. He, he, like, breaks this thing out. He's running and fumbles the ball behind him. He has to slow down. He's got these little stubby legs, too, and he ain't stopping, like, real easy. So he's got to stop. He runs back, picks the ball up, and then just hauls ass to the end zone. I'm like, holy shit. The only person got- that was even within earshot of him was probably a hunter. Uh, had you not been I mean, tackled by the biggest guy on their team playing wide receiver, yeah, I got you probably by could the have made receiver. the play on that one. Uh, yeah, um, good times there. Cubs and Colts football. Uh, yeah. We got, we got, we took a lot of L's. We did win three games somehow. I don't know how God must have loved us enough to give us three. All right, uh, but all right, we got one more game anyway. in, the, in, in the fun belt here. Georgia they Southern at South, South okay Alabama, huh? Uh, speaking of teams that are gonna run the score up, South Alabama is going to run the score up on Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern got blown out by Old Dominion, who did exactly, who does similar to what South, South Alabama's quarterback can run. They can just straight up run the ball. They can throw the ball deep. South Alabama going to blow out old um, Georgia Southern by a lot. All right. We're going to move on over to the Big 12. I'm going to tackle this real quick and get out of this because there's no Big 12 games making the ones to watch. Uh, Texas at Iowa State. Tech took a bad L last week, and they took a bad L, I think, the week before, didn't they? Uh, they're going to take another L this week. This is games at 2.30 at Jack Trice. Uh, I don't see Iowa State letting them within 20 points. Kansas State's traveling to Houston at 2.30 on Fox. Hey, Kansas State has not looked good this year. Um, they, they've two won a lot. Game, three they, they've, won, they've won their close matchups, but they should have had L against Colorado. And let's be honest, they should have lost to Kansas last week. But somehow they did Takeaways didn't. win football games. You know, if Jaden Daniels, I don't know what's wrong with his hands, if he could just hold on to the football... <laughs> Him Kansas and would have a win. Totally have the same how many, how many years? How many years in a row has Kansas State beat Kansas? Yeah. I, I didn't make like seventeen now. This by, the and, the Kansas State win streak can now legally drive. So, oh, wow. had, had Jaden Daniels not fumbled the ball one, if he'd have fumbled it one less time, <laughs> Kansas beats them. <laughs> he fumbled the ball like five times. <sighs> and they lost. Oh my god. And they were still in at the end. Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll let that go. Kansas State's going to win this game. It's going to be ugly. Houston's defense is good enough to make it ugly. They have no offense whatsoever. Uh, at 2.30 on FS1, Arizona travels to Orlando to take on UCF. UCF is awful. They fired Space coaches. game. They, oh, is this the Citronaut game? Oh, you have to ch- tune in to watch the Citronaut uniforms, though. They, do have, they are going to win the uniform game this week, without a doubt. Check it out, but I still think that uh, Jaden or not Jaden though. Noah Fafita, oof. oof, yeah, I know, oof. Noah Fafita and uh, Tedero McMillan are gonna light up the UCF, but UCF can score points at any point. I, I, I have no idea, but I'm gonna lean uh, Arizona in this game to win, even though UCF w- is favored by a touchdown. I will drop a nugget. UCF has not lost a space game uniform, space uniform game 
in the last or ever actually the last six years six or seven years they've been doing it all right well that maybe they'll win all right and then oof Yo. Oklahoma State is not favored at home against Arizona State they are a dog at home that's how little Vegas thinks of Oklahoma State, and they may be right. Oklahoma State looked like they had the ship righted with their quarterback, and then he gets hurt running the football, and they got to bring in the dude they had to bench. Oh, that's cool. All I can tell you about Arizona State is, is, like, I don't know who the quarterback is every week, but I know they got Cam Scadaboo, and they're going to give him the ball 37 times. So I would, see, I would look like for a lot of Cam Scadaboo. Low. It's you know not what, like Oak State can stop the run. I, you know what Oak State should do? They should hand the ball to their running back maybe 47 <laughs> times in a game. Oh, yeah. I'd run him until his legs fell off. But yeah, I mean, like, he's going to be a Dallas Cowboy next year, so you better enjoy him this year. <laughs> oh. And then finally, in the nightcap, and it's funny because it's a nightcap because this game happens at 7 p.m. on ESPN2. It's TCU at Baylor. Uh, TCU got a big win last week. Baylor got a big win two weeks ago. I think they were off last week. I think uh, I look for Baylor to win this game. They say three points. I think Baylor wins this game by probably two touchdowns. I, Baylor is going to beat down TCU. Baylor's defense is so good. They are going to shut TCU's ability to move the ball down the field. I would look for defensive touchdowns to be the difference in the game. I will give this is this game's called the rivalry by the fans. Instead of called the blue. The blue bonnet, something nobody nobody yes. calls it that. It's called the rivalry. Two uh, want to be Christian oh, schools. Good. It's good stuff. Watch the game. All right, Jude. I'm gonna throw a little Pac-12 college football in here. Utah State at Washington State. Uh, Washington State get this win. Of course, easily. All right, now. This is not a guaranteed win for the home team here. San that Jose State November at 9th. Oregon State. What's that? Hunter? So Utah State, Washington State is not until November 9th. What? Oh, it is. Both these games aren't until November 9th. Week early cast. Sorry, Jude. I, I, I was going to be, I thought I was being slick and I was pulling. Oh Hunter. Jude, I'm sorry about the Pac-12 not being on this week. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about the Pac-12 being all over the country. <laughs> They're gonna Let's go play to the Big Ten. You want to talk some Big Washington Ten football? State or sure. they play each other twice next year. Hey, this, oh, they get a home and football. home next season. It's a home in and home. Football. Oh. In football. All right, Jude. <laughs> Jude, I hate to tell you this. Half, your, half the Big Ten games are in the ones to watch. That's all good. I'll get to them eventually then. All right. Let's well, start with Minnesota at number 24, Illinois. Minnesota's a favorite going into the game against a ranked team. Why is Minnesota ranked over Missouri? Hmm. Excuse me. Not, I'm not 100% sure. Illinois, Illinois and Minnesota are both decent teams this year. Uh, Minnesota's got that big win against SC. Illinois staying ranked, staying relevant. I don't like Minnesota as a favorite yeah. on the road. I'm going to take Illinois to win outright. Yeah. All right. Northwestern at Purdue. This game's on the Big Ten Network at 11 a.m. Uh, Northwestern's favored by a one single point. So it's basically it's almost like a pick em. Yeah. I think whoever has the ball last is going to win. Obviously, that's going to be Northwestern. I think the team that scores the most points is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank wins. you, John Always wins Matt. the game. All righty. Then we got Oregon and Michigan. That's in our ones to watch. And Indiana and Michigan State are in our ones to watch. UCLA, as Jude would say, F UCLA at Nebraska. I have a feeling that Jude's going to lean on Nebraska heavy here. Yeah, just a little bit. That six and a half ain't going to cover it. Uh, give, give him a 13 point win. All right. And the rest of the games are on the ones to watch. And that's the Big Ten and Gold Cruz, Santa Cruz. Sorry, Jude. I, I hate to steal your games from you. Hey, that's all. That's all good. Hey, but they made the they made the list, though. That's good. That means your conference is doing something right. All right, Hunter. We're going to travel over to the Southeastern Conference for the most unrealistic fans on the planet. I think we have Ole Miss and Arkansas as in the ones to watch. Let's talk about mm-hmm. Vanderbilt and Auburn. Auburn got a big win last week, but are they going to continue? Are they going to put a streak together this week? 
I have no idea. I mean, Auburn is so talented in so many ways, and yet they have a quarterback that actively loses them football games. So I just, you know, they beat Kentucky somehow, but Kentucky just sucks for right now. Um, I'm sure they'll probably play, like, the greatest team of all time when they come to Austin. Um, Vanderbilt, they just play a a nitty-gritty, tough, down football. Uh, I'm going to say Vanderbilt wins. I mean, they take advantage of mistakes by teams. I mean, they kept themselves in the game against Texas by taking advantage of turnovers. Mm. Auburn turns the ball over. Vanderbilt will take advantage of those turnovers. Um, I don't think Auburn has the defense of line and the de- they don't have the defensive discipline to stop the spread option game out of Vanderbilt. Diego Pavi is going to have a big game. I'm going with the Commodores um, by like three or ten because every game Vanderbilt plays has to be just nuts close. All right, Maine travels to the great state of Oklahoma, Maine. Let's let's all give Oklahoma a big hand for embracing one of the SEC's time honored traditions of playing an FCS school in November. Hey, um, hey, I, I don't think a team in Austin's doing that. No, no, not SEC ready. I guess they're in Austin. Um, I'm obviously I'm gonna go with the fucking Sooners. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the maze not any good. <laughs> Of course, Oklahoma's going to... What is the Maine's mascot the for 20 points? The Bears? Yeah. Oh, there you go. He knew that without even looking at a piece of paper. Instantly. Instantly. Yeah. Came. <laughs> I know way too much. He's a I degenerate. <laughs> All right, Hunter. This next one I can't even bring myself to talk about here. Massachusetts travels to Mississippi. It's 15 p.m. You know, old, uh, Mississippi State lost the last uniform on uniform matchup when they played A&M. UMass has a very similar color set as well. Sure. So, uh, however, Mississippi State eventually has to win a game, right? Uh, <laughs> supposedly. I, I think they have to. I'm going to go with Mississippi State, I guess. I mean, this, game's gonna be the eight game. this game is going to be freaking terrible is my bet. But Michael Van Buren, the throwing Dutchman, the slinging Dutchman, will have a big game. And I think he's a great quarterback and will be good uh, for a long time. So the slinging Dutchman is going to throw for a couple putters. So look for that. All right. This this final game in the SEC, I was I wished so hard that the, the both teams were good enough to play and the ones to watch. Because a year ago, I would have told you Kentucky would have been in this game. But this year, I think Tennessee beats Kentucky horribly bad at home. What do you think, Hunter? Yeah, I mean, Tennessee's really hyped up for this match. They got some Halloween uniforms going. You know, it kind of works when you are when you have orange as a color and you wear black sometimes. Really easy. Kentucky, I mean, you know, they're probably only playing for two more games on the schedule at this point. Uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see what kind of team they are, what Mark Stoops has them going towards, but I don't see anything happening for them. Tennessee's defense is too good. Kentucky's offense is too bad. Uh, to really do anything. It's not going to be a high-scoring game, to be perfectly honest. I'm going to go 17-7 Volunteers. All right, and that's going to be the right. SEC and Hunter. Let's hop on down to the ones to watch. We're going to motor through these games pretty quick, so stick with us. Number 10, Wisconsin at Iowa at 6.30 p.m. on NBC. Iowa's a three-point favorite. I'm going to lean Wisconsin in this game. Wisconsin could win a absolute rock fight. Probably something about 14 to 13, something like that. Jude, what do you think of this one? Yeah, same thing. I'll say 14, 13, 14, 12, 14, 10, something like that. Wisconsin. All right, Hunter. I'm going to go with the Hawkeyes. You know, their offense has significantly improved this season, especially after they put this new Sullivan quarterback in. I don't know, his name's last name Sullivan, I believe. Uh, they have scored 40 points three times this season, which is something I haven't done since they played in the Rose Bowl. So I'm going to go with the Hawkeyes by, by seven. All right. Their number nine game of the week, the Trojans from the University of South Carolina travel. South Carolina. South, Southern California. Sorry, Jude. It's getting a little <laughs> bit late on my end. Southern California travel to Washington to take on the dogs, the Huskies. It's 6.30 p.m. on the Big Ten Network. USC's favored by minus two and a half. I think USC writes the ship this week, and they get a big W. Uh, Washington is not 
not very good. But this is a rivalry game. What do you think on this one, Jude? Yeah, SEO definitely ride the ship. They're going to play well. Uh, 28-21. Fight on. All right, Hunter. Uh, yeah, I agree with Jude. Um, Washington's, I think, just a bit beat up. You know, they've they've got kind of beat on the last two games they've played. Uh, they've had kind of a rough rough run. I think USC. I'd be. I was talking about in the in the pregame. I think USC is kind of starting to find their groove. I think Lincoln Riley is kind of finding his groove. I, I like USC to win this game. Um, pretty solidly, I'd say probably by at least fourteen points. Look for a big game out of Middle Boss. All right, and number eight, the number 19 Ole Miss Rebels travel to take on Arkansas Razorbacks at 11 a.m. on ESPN. Ole Miss is favored by seven. I'm taking the pigs. I think the pigs are going to go get physical with the Rebs and go push them around. Jude, I know you're a lane train guy. What do you think on this game? Hey, what, what did Henry and Phineas Godwin used to scream out? What was that? Shoe we? Man, well, they can be sure we got our butts kicked this weekend because the lane train going to roll right through Arkansas. <laughs> All right, Hunter. Good one. You know, Arkansas, they they got this game and they go right into a bye week, so no no reason for them to play down or to worry about the team in front of them. But knowing Arkansas and knowing Arkansas fans, I can guarantee you right now, they're not thinking about the team that wears blue and red. The thing about the team that was burnt orange. Uh, I'm going to go with the Rebels because I truly believe that Arkansas is not practicing or preparing for Ole Miss at this point. They're preparing for the Horns in Austin. Well, they're playing they're in Fayetteville. Yeah, they're well, playing in The Fayette, Horns um, who are located in Austin. Ah, gotcha. Our Horns. number seven game of the week is the number 18 Indiana Hoosiers taking on Michigan State at 2.30 p.m. on Peacock. India is favored by minus eight, which I think is probably a reasonable uh, score differential considering that Curtis Rourke is going to be out for a week or two weeks or something like that. I would say that Indiana needs to feel its way with uh, their new quarterback, but I still think they get the win. I would say that eight points probably covers. Jude, what do you think on this one? Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, yeah, that's Michigan State's been hanging in there with a few teams playing decent football, but Indiana's just really – playing phenomenal football at this point. And even if they're going to have a new quarterback, you know, it's just next man up. Let's go. Let's get this done. So I'll say that they'll cover the eight points. Probably win by nine. Yeah, kind of a similar similar vein. I think it's be a kind of a close game just because Indiana's quarterback situation is kind of in the air with course work injured. Uh, but, you know, Michigan State makes too many mistakes. I think right now they're, they're a significantly improved team this year from last. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Indiana to win. All right, our number By six like game points. of the week is Louisville at Clemson at 6.30 p.m. on ESPN. Clemson's favored by 10 and a half. I, I'm going to say Clemson wins the game. I don't I don't, I don't. think it's going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be probably a touchdown or so score. Maybe a, maybe a few more points than that, but that's kind of my thought. Jude, what are you thinking on this one? Um. I got I got a little sidetrack. What game are we talking about? I'm sorry. Louisville and Clemson. I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lou, Lou, Louisville. Put anybody to sleep. Yeah, Lou, Louisville. I think is going to pull off the upset. I think they're going to win by three points. All right, Hunter. I am going with the Tigers. They're going to blow Louisville out and just add fuel to the Miami's overrated fire by crushing Louisville. All righty. The number five game of the week, the newly top 10 Texas A&M Aggies travel to South Carolina to take on the Gamecocks at 6.30 p.m. on ABC. Texas A&M is only a two and a half point favorite. Is this going to be the undoing of Texas A&M season or does Texas A&M beat yet another SEC foe? Jude, what do you think on this one? Uh, I think the undoing is coming, but not this week. They, they, they will... Turn into Texas A and M and fall out of contention soon, but I think they will. They will beat the Gamecocks. All right, Hunter. Well, you know, there's something that in the state of Texas that we call battered Aggie syndrome. That anytime A and M is up, they eventually come down, and you develop. And if you're an A and M fan, you develop what's called battered Aggie syndrome. However, it will be staved off for this week because Lenora Sellers just makes too many mistakes as a true freshman quarterback. <laughs> 
and I think A&M should be able to take advantage of those. It's not going to be a particularly awesome game, but I do think A&M will win in a close one, uh, probably by about three or seven points. All right. Now our number four game of the week. Somehow Florida sneaks in, but this is the world's largest outdoor cocktail party or something like that. Uh, Florida's taking on number two, Georgia, at 2.30 p.m. on ABC. Georgia's favored by 17. Uh, I don't think Florida loses by 17. They're not going to win this game, but they're not going to lose by 17. Jude, what do you think about Georgia and Florida? I don't know. I know it's a big rivalry, but Georgia, man, they're running in all cylinders right now, and Florida really isn't. I don't know. I'm going to take them to cover the spread. I'll take Georgia to cover that spread. I'll take the over on Georgia players getting a drunk driving uh, tickets after the game. Um, <laughs> Speeding. They're just, they're just really fast on and off the field. Yeah, I'm going to go with Georgia. Um, I don't think it's I don't think they're going to cover. I think that Florida will cover. I don't think it's particularly – it's going to be a knockdown nasty kind of game because Florida's going to come in really motivated. I mean, Billy Napier's literally coaching for his job. Um there is talk that he's not necessarily fired yet. So this is a game that if he can win, you know, he could maybe win himself another another season at the helm. So we'll just see. DJ Lagway is a true freshman, though. And as we've seen, Georgia can make quarterbacks who are fresh off injury and true freshmen uncomfortable. Really uncomfortable. So we'll see. But um, I think it's been kind of a nasty game. But I am going to go with the Dogs to win, but the Gators to cover. All right, our number three game of the week, the number one team in the nation, the Oregon Ducks travel to Michigan to take on the Wolverines. This game's at 2.30 p.m. on CBS. Oregon's a 14.5-point favorite. I'm sorry. As much as I'd like to say they cover that, Michigan is not a team to go and mess around with. They're going to have to play. They're going to have to be on their very best because Michigan is a team that can beat Oregon. I'm not saying that Michigan's going to beat Oregon, but if you told me that Michigan beat Oregon next week when we film our next episode, I would say, like, hmm, I can believe that. Uh, I don't think Oregon covers that 14 and a half, but I'll, I'll say that they, they more than likely will win the game. Jude, what do you think on this one? Yeah, you pretty much nailed it. They're probably going to win the game, but they're not going to go into the big house with two <laughs> touchdowns. It's just, it's just not how it works. Mi- Michigan is too disciplined, and they're, they are well coached. Uh, and, and they've got players. You know, they, they've, got, they've got some players on their football team, so I'll take Oregon to win, but Michigan to cover. If I was Michigan in this game, I would run the ball every play. I'd run the ball 45 times. However it works out, run the ball 45 times. Because Michigan has the offensive line. They have the running backs. They have the running quarterback able to go and challenge Oregon. At The only thing that Oregon has looked mortal at, when they played Boise State, they struggled to stop the run. And very few teams have attacked them like that. They've all decided they're going to be this big air attack against them. I don't think Michigan's going to win. Don't get me wrong. But I really would like to – if if Sharon Moore is going to prove that he is actually head coach material, he needs to play this game close. And I really think that's going to be through the run game and letting your defensive line dictate the game to Dylan Gabriel. That's the other uh, key for Michigan. They have the ability to contain Dylan Gabriel. They're going to need to. Um, but they won't have Will Johnson. So that's going to be the eighth. That's going to be the uh, – the Achilles heel for the Wolverines. They won't have Will Johnson, so I'm going to roll with the Ducks by 10. All righty. Our number two game of the week, the number 18 Pitt Panthers, who I think are vastly underrated. Vastly underrated. Take on, they travel actually to Dallas to take on the My Little Ponies, the number 20 SMU Mustangs. This game's at 7 p.m. on the ACC Network. SMU is favored by 7.5. I think wrong team favored. I'm going to lean the Panthers on this one. I think Pitt gets a massive win. Jude, what do you think on this one? Not in Dallas. I think SMU is going to win the game. Uh, it's going to be a close game. It could be a well, well played game. Uh, All SMU 24, Pitt 20. I'm going to roll with the Panthers. SMU's quarterback, Kevin Jennings, makes a lot of mistakes, uh, fumbles the ball, turns the ball over a lot. Pitt has lived off turnovers. I think they're going to live off them again this week. And SMU is going to suffer their first conference loss because very rarely do you enter a conference and go undefeated in conference play the first year. Their loss comes this week against the Panthers. All right, our number one game of the week. 
of the ones to watch. The number four Ohio State Buckeyes traveled to the number three Penn State Nittany Lions. I, I don't like picking this game at all. I don't. I don't know that either team is very good right now. Um, Ohio State has shown a lot of weakness. They should have lost last week against Nebraska. But conversely, Penn State hasn't looked great either, and we don't know the health of Drew Aller. But I do know that uh, they're going to run the ball. There's going to be a lot of running in this game. Uh, I hate picking against Penn State at home, but this game's at 11 a.m., so really that good night game feel at uh, in Happy Valley is kind of gone. I'm, uh, I'm going to say Ohio State wins, but it's going to be like by less than three and a half. I would say if you told me they win by one point, I'd believe that. If you told me they win by three points, I'd believe that. If you told me they win by six points, I'd be like, I don't know on that one. So I'm going to lean Ohio State to take the win against Penn State. Jude, what do you think? Tough game to pick. Uh, if I had to lean one way, uh, what, what is that? The law of or properties? Or how, how does that saying go? Law of transitive properties. Law of transitive properties. Now, I know it's not completely in effect right now, but, but Penn State did equal one out against my Trojans. So I'm, I'm going to take them to equal one out against uh, Ohio State. Ohio State's down their starting left tackle, and I think they're going to be down their backup left tackle. If there's a game for Abdul Carter – or what the other guy's name is to go and chop Robinson. You know, chop Robinson to not disappear against Ohio State. It has to be this year. Drew Aller's is probably going to play in this game. Um, man, I mean, we talked about it earlier. Nebraska made Ohio State look mortal with the run game. Penn State's got two great running backs. Uh, I think their defense is going to get after uh, Will um, after Will Howard and all that. So I'm going to go with the Nittany Lions. All righty, that's going to break down. That's going to end the ones to watch. We're going to hit the worst two minutes in college football picking of all time. We're going to start with our two-minute warning and our contenders, pretenders, bold predictions, and game of the week. I'm going to start off. I'm going to say my contender this week is going to be Oregon. If Oregon wins this game this week, they are definitely the national championship contender. Our pretender this week is Miami. At some point, Miami's going to run into a team from the ACC, and they are going to beat Miami. My bold prediction is Pittsburgh. They're going to beat SMU this weekend. Then they're going to play for the ACC championship because they're going to beat Miami as well. Pittsburgh is a team not to mess with. Now that I've picked them with my bold prediction, we can almost I can almost assure you that they're probably going to lose multiple games coming up. But without further ado, we'll get to my game of the week. You scheduled Maine. Are you kidding me? What is wrong with people these days? You scheduled Maine? Maine. Seriously. Maine. Maine. I'm like, oh, we need to give me game. Maine. You know what, Oklahoma? You stink. <laughs> All right. You scheduled oh, Maine. You had man. to fire you had to fire offensive coordinator because you're afraid of Maine. Maine. You scheduled Maine. Like you couldn't play anybody else? No one else. Like, oh, we scheduled Maine. You get what you get. That's my game of the week. It's a week scheduler versus a week team. Week. Game of the week. All right, Jude. All right. My, I'll start with my game of the week. My game of the week is right out of my conference, Wyoming at New Mexico. Both bad teams. You know, not much more to say about that. You know, three and five, one and seven playing each other at this time of the year, you know, don't, don't, don't tune in. If that's a game that's on TV is one of the ones that probably shouldn't. My bold prediction is that Duke is going to upset Miami and they're going to beat them by two touchdowns because like Cash just said, and I've been saying for a while, Miami's been on my pretenders list for a long time. Uh, excuse me. And what, what what am I missing? Like I said, my bold prediction is pretenders. Oh yeah, so contenders and pretenders. Pretender, obviously Miami, and my contender, even though they're six and two, because I do think at least one six and two team will not six and two, but one two loss team will make it into the 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 playoff. I think Ole Miss is going to take it to Arkansas this weekend, and. 
Yeah, there, there you go. I guess, Hunter, you're yeah. up. You got it. Hunter. Uh, contender for this week. I'm going to go with the Oregon Ducks. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Oregon Ducks. Um, like I said, this is kind of this is gonna be their, a big test for them. But so far, they've passed every test so far, so I expect them to change now. Pretender, I'm gonna go with the coach that's masquerading as a college football coach, and not purely a guy who lies and gives money to, to high school kids, so that way they'll come to commit to his school. I'm gonna go with Hugh Freeze and the Auburn Tigers. Um, you know, the first time you miss game prep because you're sick, your team actually plays better. So that's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, so who knows? But uh, and then um, for my bold prediction, I'm gonna stick with what I predicted earlier. The team not ranked number one in the national cha- uh, in the college football playoff will win the national championship. When, you know, we get to that point where the playoff field gets set and all that good stuff. And then finally, my game of the week. I was perusing around. I'm gonna go with UMass and Mississippi State. I mean, it's just two teams that suck. Uh. I think Mississippi State is going to blow out UMass, but it's going to be, you know, a boring. It, it's not going to be fun to watch because it's a a team from the Northeast who stinks, and Mississippi State from the Southeast who also stinks, but is so much more talented that they should win. All right, that's going to be Hunter and his two minute warning. The Hunter, I'm going to make you full screen real quick. Solo layout. Remind the great folks about what's coming up next. Tune in. <clears throat> So you can see a special secret episode of Saturday night's main event taped long ago. But talking about current events. Shut up. Oh, damn it. I, I just I just removed Jude on accident. I was trying to put him on solo layout. Jude. Oh, I oh, hold on a second, Jude. I gotta go back to Hunter. Hunter, go ahead oh. and say your goodbyes. Go Navy. Beat Rice. Hook 'em horns. Eat 'em up cats. I'm sad. All right, Jude. Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? Thanks for thanks for tuning in. Uh, you know, fight on, we are SC, and be us for victory. Remember, you can't spell SEC without the letters S and C. You know, tough year this year, but we'll bounce back. But we'll finish strong. Have a big year next year. And uh, come on, let, let's beat the Huskies. Good night, everyone. All righty, that's going to wrap the show for this week. I want to thank Hunter and Jude for hopping on. Lindsay could not be here, but we covered the, we covered it for them. We got everything done. I think we needed to get done, except for the two-minute warning. We'll let him have a 12-minute story next week instead of a, his normal 25-minute story. So anyways, that's going to wrap it up. Make sure you stay tuned after this, and you see Hunter's special recording that we that he made. And uh, obtained, obtained, obtained. Hey, look, it's uh, it's late. I'm tired. You're tired. We're tired. Uh, but anyways, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. Remember, the team that scores the most points always wins the game. Thanks for watching.